Hello? So I need everybody to go on gimkid.com slash play and enter the code 8509. Or you can say after the play, you just put slash 8509. I think it works also. And so we're going to play a five-minute game. So you get a feel of how it works. So when you answer your questions, okay, the key is that you need to do the upgrading because if you just answer the question one by one, you only get like one dollar per question and you will not win that way. So the way to win is to shop, okay? So once you have a little money, you need to go shopping, okay? Yeah, you're waiting right now. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, there's a bunch of people coming on. Um, question? Somebody have a question? We were supposed to choose. Well, no, yeah, you put your names in there. Okay. All right, so Paul, the best, I guess, is going to be the best here. And maybe the tech dude will win. Okay, so... If I did this with my classes, I would, are you listening? Um, I would preload the names on there so they just choose the right name because otherwise some of these devious Tennesseans would uh, put silly names like some of you are trying to do here. Okay, so somebody says dirty stew. Goodness gracious. Okay. <laughs> See, Dirty Stew would be a goner on my game here, but, but we're going to condone this kind of behavior right now. Okay. All right. So, okay. So we have enough people to, you know, play 42 players. That's pretty good. So if you couldn't get done, um, yeah, the, okay, here it goes. Let's get started. All right. So let's go and yeah. All right, play, play, play. Yes. <laughs> They're answering the questions now. We need to keep them. I'll get them after. No, not, not yet. I, there's a lot more. It's too bad I don't have a problem. I can't believe them. They're making fun of my accent. Yeah, I like it. It's different. Uh, Tennessee and... Therapy. Okay. All right. Matthew's in the lead. Matthew, you need to upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Shop, shop, shop. Anya from Alemania. All right. Okay. Take a picture of this. They're having fun. Don't forget to take out insurance. Yes, make sure you shop. Don't, don't, don't forget to shop or you will stay. If you don't shop, it leads you nowhere. You have to shop. Shop, shop, shop. Every time you get the opportunity, shop. Yeah. Oh, Michael's taking off. No, I don't know. This is a good game. It's fun. No, 
I like it. Unfortunately, I'm not signed in on this computer, so. Who's the guy that let me have this computer? Sorry? I'm not signed in as myself on that computer, yeah, I can so. Help you out too, you? Uh, yeah, maybe we should do that real quick. We want to bring the game over thing up. Can you bring up the slide with the game? We just play it. Yeah. All right. So congratulations to Divey. Um, $49,427 in five minutes. All right. If that was real money, wow. Okay. Followed by... Melissa and Matad. Okay, so that was pretty awesome. So if you think about it, um, yeah, if you can all just learn how to code, that would be awesome. Uh, excuse me, where's my presentation? Oh. Okay. So I'm, I mean, personally, I, I cannot believe that this kid did this, okay? How many in here know how to code? Okay, yeah, so you need to definitely develop that skill and, yeah, come up with something like that because, I mean, how do you even do that? So teachers love it when you all come up with great ideas like that. So that was GimKid. Okay, so how many have played Quizlet.live? Okay, so a few people. Okay, so as you can see, my classes... If you can tell by, by the picture, all the pictures were taken this year, by the way, and I've had my students for only 10 days. So it was kind of hard to get all this in in 10 days, but we did it. So um, on the Quizlet app, okay, which is also a website, there's a game, and it's called Quizlet.life. And what you do on there is you review your vocabulary sets in groups. So we cannot play that in here because you do not know each other's names. So otherwise we could have played this. But what happens is they auto-generate groups and then the students have to meet with their group and then they play together. So if there are four people in a group, the questions come up and one person in the group will have the answer. So they have to actually check with each other and bond and, you know, and they have to learn who they even are in the class. So as you can see, there are 33 people in that class. So half of them didn't know, they didn't know each other. And they had definitely, even if they knew each other since kindergarten, Maybe they never actually bonded with them. So this is one way to really get them to bond. So I love Quizlet Live. As you can see, my Eiffel Tower in the back. Yeah, yeah, we've got it going. We can just teach the teacher French. Okay, 
So Quizlet Match, okay, so if you're on Quizlet, you know about Match, okay, the students love coming up there and make the words disappear. So what I usually do is, they always sit in groups, so I set people, send people up from the groups to work on the board, and then the class, everybody can work on their cell phones and see if they can beat each other's score. They're pretty good at it, actually. All right, so they're actually um, Amalia Nelson. She uh, is in charge of this company, apparently. Um, she told me there were millions of sets that they have now. So you can study virtually anything on Quizlet. Like, it's, it's unbelievable how much they have on that. And uh, the accounts are still free. Um, the good part about premium is that you don't get the ads come up. So if I'm a teacher and maybe I've been Googling something, okay, so previously, the, yeah, whatever you Googling will come up there. Like one time I was looking into uh, vacation trips to Costa Rica or something and then all that ever came up was Costa Rica stuff. So it was pretty funny. Um, so with the, um, you know, with the paid version, you would not get that. So then also you can create your classes on there and you can follow the students' progress. So we like that. Yes? Yes, I, I love that. And um, what I also like about Quizlet is the uh, the learn mode, so what I tell them is, okay, you all finish the learn mode, I don't want to hear anything, you know, what you've done until you finish your learn mode. And then they're able to play on the board, okay? So, if I could get this to actually log in, we could play a little game, but I don't know, oh my God. Okay, I'm signed in on my Google, so. Okay, fantastic. Okay, as you can see, Quizlet has a night vision thing now. There. Okay, who would have known? Okay, who knows their French? Okay, somebody come on down here. Come on down here. The, the lady, yeah, come on, come on down here. Okay. No, I will have you play a little French game. Okay, so we just put it on Matt. Come on, come on up here, come on up here. Okay, so what you have to do is you make the words disappear, okay? So you slide the English on top of the French or the French on top of the English. It doesn't matter until the whole board is gone, okay? So I see what you can do with that. Yeah, you have to do it on there. He, he don't have a mouse attached on there. Okay. All right. Go, go, go. This is super easy stuff because, you know, my students are beginners. Okay, so your score was 14.3. That's pretty good. All right, let's have somebody challenge that score. Come on down, French speakers. You don't have to know much for this game. Come on. Thank you for playing. All right, come on down. All right, 14 point, what was it? Three. Okay, let's see if you can do 14 point. It's just on the pad. Yeah, right on there. Oh, you ought to be faster than that. <laughs> go, go. Oh, you lost. Sorry. Okay. So I say. Yeah, no. Okay. All right. Twenty nine point two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you did. Okay. Thank you for playing. Okay. Good job. Good job. All right. So Quizlet, so we're going to give a couple of accounts away here in just a few minutes, okay? All right, so StudyStack, how many know about StudyStack? Nobody? Really? Okay, you, you do? Okay. All right, so StudyStack has been around for a really long time. Um, it's, I mean, at least 10 years that I know of. Um, what you do on there, it's fantastic actually because you... Uh, download your words from a spreadsheet. I mean, you can type them in individually if you so choose, but you can get your whole load of words, like 50 words. You can put them on there on studystack.com. 
and you will get all these different options come up from one set of words. So from the one time that I put these words on there, I can do the flashcards. Oh, another thing about Quizlet, which I did not mention, but it was on the slide, is that Quizlet pronounces the words. Yeah. Now, StudyStack does not. They do not speak anything except English. So don't even try to have them pronounce this. Okay. So um, you can make your flashcards then. You can do a matching game. So their matching game is a little different from Quizlet. Um, we're not going to have time to play that because I want to make sure that we get the drawing in. Um, but what happens on their matching is that the English or the French or whatever is on the top and the other language is on the bottom. And then you tap. You like to you tap the top, then you tap the bottom and so forth till, till um, all the words disappear. And like a beautiful picture appears behind as a background. Like it's, it's really, yeah, it's awesome pictures. It's fantastic. Okay, they have a lot of Tennessee landscapes on there, so we're proud of Yeah, They have Klingman's Dome on there. Yep, it's fantastic. Okay, you can play Hangman. Okay, you can play some crossword games. And by the way, you can, tie, uh, you can print these out also. Um, you can actually give them a quiz and an actual test. So the difference between quiz and test, there really isn't any difference. It's the same kind of idea. Okay, you can make a study table. The bug match and the hungry bug is a little silly because, like I said, the game is like 10 years old and games have evolved since then. So it's kind of silly. Yeah, the kids would not want to play that. Okay. But they do like the match because it times on the bottom right. It will time how fast they were able to make all the words disappear. And so each group then competes against each other. So they love doing that and they're really competitive with this kind of thing. Okay. So that study stack, and that costs like $10 a year. And I found this up because I was using the free version and again, they use your Google stuff, whatever you Google, and it comes up there. And one day, it just wouldn't let me play anymore. So it was like eight o'clock in the morning, I was about to do this with my students and it wouldn't play. And I had to upgrade, they made me do it. So they held me up for $10, but I mean, $10 is not that bad. So it's, you know, an investment, I suppose. But I highly recommend it because uh, I should, I, yeah, yeah, I, I really should. Okay, Flipgrid. Okay, so how many know about Flipgrid? Okay, so the latest thing in foreign language education and well, anywhere if you're a teacher in anything is Flipgrid. So what you do on there is it's a secure account now because Microsoft bought it over the summer. So now... Okay, all your previous Flipgrids, they are kind of lost in cyberspace somewhere because I had to make out new ones. And though the codes will still work, your whole grid is like kind of disappeared. So I only have one for French and one for German. And these are actual ones that they made. Um, so they, you can specify how long you want them to talk on there. It's a video recording thing. So they uh, click on that green button and they record themselves uh, with little skits and things of that nature. Um, you can ask them questions they can respond to, and of course, in the language. So mine are total beginners, so let's see if we can listen to one of those. This is embarrassing, but <laughs> let me see. Did you get a permission form signed Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at there. Who would have known? There's all my... There's all my accounts. Okay, where's the new ones? These are my old ones. Oh no, this is my previous ones. They really can't see those. Mm -hmm. Seriously, they're not on there. I apologize. Okay. Do you want to see one for real? Okay. No, this is embarrassing. <laughs> no. Okay, the yeah, here you go. SDGs in action, we'll go with that. Okay, all right. Oh, they said all kinds of crazy stuff on there. Okay, do you all know about the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals? So we actually studied them last year, and I don't know what happened to my German ones. So I apologize for that, but the French ones. I was going to show you the, the French one there. It was cute. Okay. But anyway, Flipgrid. It is free. They do not charge a dime for Flipgrid. Okay? All right. 
So this is the last one actually that we're going to talk about, and this is called the Metaverse app. Okay, this is so worth it. Okay, if you go to any uh, major conferences that have to do with teaching, they talk about Metaverse now. So Metaverse goes a step further in virtual reality because no longer do we have the students just experience virtual reality, now we make them create their own virtual reality experiences, okay? So you can try one out if you want to. Um, that one right there, it's a very simple one here. I just made this out yesterday. This is a practice one. Um, so it's super easy. You have your students go on gometa.io and there are no headsets required. That's the good part. They just do this on their cell phone. Um, so you give them their vocabulary or whatever topic you want the experience to be about and then they create their own uh, maze of experiences. Okay, like Okay, if you look at these over here, I made this one up here last year, El Pozo de los Deseos. So they had to go through a maze and then they actually had to tell me what their wish was. So this one here, um, this is a French one. Okay, so if you scan it, it will ask you to go on the Metaverse app and to do it from there. Okay, so then, okay, the students actually have to get up out of their seats and they will have to answer questions on there. If they answer the question wrong, like if you go on this particular one, if you answer the question wrong, then it goes to end experience. So instead of end experience, I could have done this differently and led them to maybe a video that had to do with time telling because they obviously don't know how to tell time in French if they can't answer these simple questions, okay? So that is Metaverse, so I kind of like it. Let's see if we can get it to come up. Yeah, I hope my computer turns up actually. Oh gosh, I know that's not gonna be on Facebook. This ain't gonna work. No. Okay, well I can do that right now, sorry about that. Okay, so, um, well, there's one about the Eiffel Tower in the Spanish imperfect tense. Let's see, there's one on the present person. Okay, so I made out several of these myself, but my students really like to make these out themselves. And um, I will tell you that within one hour class period, they are able to create these. Okay, so this doesn't take long at all. All you do is you bring scenes onto the screen and then you link the screens together. And so if they give the wrong answer to a vocabulary word, for example, you just lead them back to a previous slide. You can also uh, make them earn coins and they have to you know, collect coins and such things. So they really like it. You can see these students really enjoy that. Okay. All right, that is Metaverse. Anybody have any questions about? Yes. If you hold on just a minute. Sorry. Just a quick question about your class. Do all your students have uh, computers in your class to do all these apps? Okay, so yeah, as you or saw, this or? required Chromebooks. Okay, you cannot create on Metaverse um, on a cell phone. You have to use a computer. So I only have six uh, Chromebooks in my classroom, but some of the students, of course, own their own laptops, so on the day that we would assign something like this, I would ask them to bring their, their laptop, so at least, you know, one per group had one. They apparently had two per group right there, so, yeah. But to play regular games, okay, I will let them get their cell phones on. So normally, as soon as they come into class, I tell them, put their phones in this pocket chart on the wall, and then when we use their device, you know, I tell them, okay, you can get your cell phones now. Okay. Like if we do Duolingo, how many in here like Duolingo? Okay. Yeah. I kind of don't think it works too much. I will tell you that, well, this is a true story. So in 2015, I just thought, well, let me just do the French, you know, to remember it from like years ago when I studied it. And so I did the entire Duolingo French in one day. And I, yeah, when you come to the end, you get a trophy. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. No, it's, it's I mean, it's, it has a little trophy at the end. You know, the little duo guy gives you a trophy. And 
So do you think I speak French because I do Duolingo now? No. No, no, no. Okay, I hate to say it, but Duolingo does not exactly work. But for my students, it seems to work sort of, because I will tell you, okay, now everybody talks about language acquisition, right? Okay, we want to acquire, we don't want to, you know, see these verb conjugations up there. So I will tell you that in my German class, which German is my native language, so um, I really don't feel like writing verb conjugations in my native language up there on the board. It'd be kind of ridiculous. So, okay, so they're on Duolingo, and then they have questions. Okay, I say, okay, how come this verb is like that? And they actually figure it out. So the acquisition thing, I mean, there's really something to it. Like the der, die, das in German, the genders. So they ask, okay, so der is masculine and die is, I mean, they figured this out on their own because we haven't even covered that yet. So, you know, Duolingo isn't all bad. Yes? So, like, I'm not a big fan of rote memorization, but what I found was a great website for just kind of baking conjugations into your brain was a site called Conjugamos, uh, Con Conjugamos, which is the Spanish spelling of conjugate. Yeah. Uh, and there's like a mode where you can use a standalone person mm. or as a teacher with students. Have you any experience with that at all? Mm, I, I have not used the Conjugamos, but I've seen it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know that at a lot of schools, they forbid the teachers to write conjugations on the board these days. So. Yes. Hi. Um, not really a microphone-worthy uh, question, but I have Metaverse on here. If you'd like yeah. me to, I can put it on the computer and you can show it to everyone. Okay, go ahead. Okay, cool. You can walk us through this experience uh, if you like. We have a couple minutes for you to do that. Yes? Uh, well, I mean, I don't speak French, so I can't. Oh, there's easy yeah. questions now. Come on. Okay, okay. Well, we'll help you out. Yeah. Oh, the French expert, what they can help you out. Oh no, mine are a lot already. They go through the halls and they're all bonjour, ça va, and I mean they they chatter it. Oh, they they love speaking French now, yeah, and the German too. Yeah, they're proud of it. Yeah, it's a it's a whole different matter to teach French in German rather than Spanish because when they come in Spanish, they're like, oh, I'm here. You know why? They can just all learn English. I mean they're so mean. But if you, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm, yeah. It's all yours. Why is it recording? There you go. Why is it recording? Well, it's not recording. It's oh, okay. displaying on the So, quelle heure est-il? Somebody want to give me the answer? Do you do you know your time in French? Well, sorry, you can't click this. Oh, you have to. Yeah, use the iPhone just like you're using. Okay, okay, we'll do that. Okay, so if you say no, no, then it ends the experience because that's how I set it up. Now, you, yeah. So we're gonna go with we. Okay, so which one is it? Il est une heure or is it il est une heure? Which one? First one or second one? Oh, that is so smart. Okay, continue. Come on, it's 12, dude. Uh, which one? First one? So if you choose the second one, it's over. Okay, très bien. Come on, okay, two o'clock. Which one is it? Well, um, this is a trick question. We'll go with the first one? Okay. All right. So, like I said, you can link this to all kinds of things, like their word walls you can link it to. You can uh, make them take a selfie picture, and it comes, you know, all their pictures come up. So, it's kind of cool. So, thank you for letting us use it. So, yeah. So, is this experience predominantly just for classroom settings, or like could no, I just No, anybody on my own? can go on there and okay. create experience. Is it a social aspect in terms of the selfie? Like, where does it go if you're not connected to anybody? Like, uh, not anybody, but not in the classroom setting? Because you're saying it takes selfies. Well, you where does would it go? set up your own. You have to put that on there in different scenes and blocks and such things. It's so super easy okay. to do, and you know, it's up to you what you do with it. Okay. But you. you can uh, copy other people's experiences as well. So you can actually go on there and search for your language area, and other people will have uh, some already made up. But nobody's are really super good. Like one of my students made up a really fantastic one, actually. Um, but 
I'm not sure why I didn't show that to you. I should have. Okay, that was really good. Yeah. From last year. So I'll try to stick to stuff we actually did this year. But last year I had this little genius in my class here. Thank you very much, Ruth. Thank you.